Okay. Second one, I need to see how many of you scored the highest in the O category. Let's see the O's. All right. Let's have the O's stand. The O stands for otter. Now, you are looking at the parties waiting to happen here. Right here. Hey. I, I am a purebred otter. I mean, so uh, all I have, I'm up to 40 on that score, uh, absolutely. So these are the people who are the entertainers. These are the fun-loving, uh, uh, enthusiastic, uh, take risks, uh, motivators. Listen how many of them I'm going to give you. Visionary, you know. Uh, they're the creative ones, the fun-loving. These are the networkers. These people know people who know people who know people. They know everybody, right? <laughs> they're the ones that just bring so much fun into our life and, and into our world. So let's give these people a hand. I know you may have scored the highest on this, but I know you also have, you know, some of the other, and you may have scored pretty close on two of them, fairly high, but again, usually it's just one or two, and we're usually low on two of them, but I know there are people here that are almost perfectly mature, they just have a flat line, you know, right across the... <laughs> you know. We know what's going on in your life, but the otters, now otters are fun and otters are, are, are sure... Uh, worthwhile having around, right? But now here's the problem with otters. And being one, I know what a lot of problems are in being an otter, but let me just share some of them. Uh, they are the party waiting to happen, but if they say, party, oh, I'll be there, they may not be there. They'll probably <laughs> not bring the popcorn and the things they promised to bring because we forgot. I mean, we're at some other party. Oh, I was supposed to be that party? Oh, well. So we are the uh, take risk people, but the problem is we can be dangerous and foolish. And I I've been in trouble most of my life, as my wife will testify. Uh, we were up in the mountains of California one time, and uh, my son Greg and Michael and I, we were sliding down this natural uh, rock water, water slide with it was kind of moss covered. We found it way up in the Sierras. And I was having a ball, and I, I looked at this thing from these pools. There were pools like you could, uh, you know, coast into. And I was looking at this pool, and I was getting bored with just sliding where we were sliding, because otters get bored in a hurry. And I said to Greg, Greg, see how this naturally curves around here and goes into this pool? He said, yeah, uh-huh, because we're so motivational. That every, people believe us. And, and uh, so, I said, uh, so I said, why don't you get in the middle of the slide, and uh, Norma says, what are you doing? Oh, nothing. <laughs> trust me. When an otter says, trust me, look into it instantly. <laughs> so I said, see how you can say, and I'll get my camera, I had a new camera, so I'll get my camera, and I'll shoot a picture of you flying into this pool right here, and it'll be a great shot. Telephoto, I'll step back over here, I'll get it. He said, Dad, I don't know, are you sure that's, it won't, it's in. Okay, I'll try it. All his life, he's believed me. Still to this day, it's amazing. Anyway, he's married too. His wife's helping him though a lot. And uh, so he gets out in the middle of this thing. It's moss, you know, he's got his hands here and he goes to slide, okay? And I said, hey, if you don't make it, I'll just reach out and grab you. Poof. He's gone. Over the side. Down, boom, 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 boom. He kept his cool in his head, you know, and he, he could have actually been majorly hurt, okay? And I watched the whole thing. She couldn't see him go over. I mean, she saw him go over, but she didn't see what he, I was seeing. And, uh, but who was in trouble, Greg or, or me? Yeah. yeah, I was big time trouble, and she was really upset with me, which she should have been. And when I saw him move after he lied uh, just in this pool, he was lying in this pool still for a few seconds, down, way down a ways. And I went, oh, I can't believe I tried this. I can't believe I tried this. I've done these things all my life. But he moved, he got up, and he said, Dad, I think I'm okay. And I went, oh, great, I'm not in trouble anymore. <laughs> so anyway, we're, we're, uh, uh, we, we are a little bit foolish for sure, but look at all the things. We're very verbal. And so my daughter, actually each of my children have quite a bit of this. Uh, my daughter has some of the other ones, but she has a lot of otter. Guess what otters do under pressure? They tend to verbally attack verbally, because we're real expressive. Uh, when lions are, are under pressure, they become dictators. So, uh, but, uh, but otters like to uh, express, and so when Carrie and I used to get into a verbal attack under pressure in some condition, we'd both look at you and go, oh, pff, 
It's just two otters attacking each other. <laughs> and we would calm down because we would realize that's our tendency under pressure. And so we didn't take a lot of that stuff personal. We just uh, recognized each other's strength and so on. Uh, Big problem with us as otters is that um, we go to the fifth level of communication too easily. And I'm going to share with you tomorrow in one of the sessions um, what the five levels of communication are and how to go deep, intimately uh, with people. But what happens with us, as we know so many people, is that I come across as very friendly and warm and personal with a person, and they say, he's my best friend. I mean, I just, I just met them. But see, my problem is I'm about that deep. And see, I have all these people, and so it's, it's not hard for me to hurt somebody's feelings. I didn't mean to. I'm just real enthusiastic, excited about meeting these people. But, you know, as soon as I walk out of the room, I meet somebody else, and I'm excited <laughs> about meeting them. And I say, I, I met you, and so they're, they're and, and this is what happens with us, right? The otters, don't we get in trouble from time to time? Shaking her head, yes. So that, um, but that's, that's kind of what we do. Uh, the same kind of thing uh, happened, uh, uh, you know what, we, we goof off too much. My son, uh, uh, Greg, has a lot of otter in him, but he's got a lot of lions, I mentioned, so he's kind of a lion otter. He's kind of a fun boss. And, uh, <laughs> but, but I was up in the mountains one time skiing with the whole family, and just he and I happened to be on this one run, and, and I got the Montezuma revenge way up in this altitude. And I had my, all my ski outfit on, you know, so it was kind of an uncomfortable experience. But he thought it was really funny. So, you know, he's, he's lying on the snow just slapping and saying, Dad, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. Well, you know, see, because sometimes you don't want people laughing at you. And, and uh, it, it isn't the kind of thing. Uh, in fact, uh, one of my friends that uh, was uh, a part of this whole uh, uh, video presentation is an otter. And uh, he loves to play practical jokes. He and otter, otters do that type of thing. And, and so he found a cassette tape several years ago that sounds just like the Russians are attacking us with nuclear missiles. And what it is, it's an ordinary radio show. It's a professional um, you know, um, uh, talk show host. And he's just, you know, just like you were waking up in the morning to hear somebody on the radio. Sounds just like it. And then all of a sudden he says, Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, we have a special emergency bulletin, and they break in with this emergency message that we're under attack, nuclear weapons from Russia. Well, he played that to everybody, thought it was the funniest thing. Even older people, you know, and I, th I said, hey, these people could have a heart attack, you know, and oh, what a scream. And uh, not that they would have a heart attack, but it's fun to do this. But he did it one time with a friend his age, and the guy really freaked out called his wife instantly and said, Honey, I love you. I love you. And he was telling her, and he says, I, I haven't said that to you, but I know what's happening, and I love you. And he hung up. <laughs> and then, his, then, then, then my friend told this guy, oh, it's just a joke. Just a, he forgot to call his wife back. Okay, so this friend of mine is not allowed in their home to this day. <laughs> See, so we, can, uh, we get too much fun and so on. That's what happens to us. For example, when I go to a restaurant, menus are just a group of suggestions. <laughs> I mean, it's fun to be in a restaurant. See, I like to combine five with four and put a little three in there on the side. It drives my wife nuts because she likes to order number five. She says, why do you confuse everybody? I said, hey, it's no fun to just come in and order number five. I mean, who wants to do that? We're real optimistic. You know, I always think anything's possible, you know, and, and, and I can do anything. I had kind of a semi-embarrassing experience here this last winter. I was in uh, Wichita, Kansas speaking. It was very cold. And I didn't have an overcoat. So a couple of buddies that, that are on our seminar team said, well, let's just go buy one. I said, great idea. You know, impulsive, you know, spontaneous. And so we go to this outlet mall. And I love outlet malls, you know, all these low prices and everything. And so I'm in there, and I find this uh, really expensive uh, navy blue overcoat with angora wool and, and it's really nice. The price tag's $450 and, and, but it's on sale f you know, in this place for $129. So I say to uh, my friend, hey, watch me get this for $99. Isn't that what you paid for yours? And he said, yeah. I said, $99, I'll get it $99. 
So I say, where's the manager? And uh, the guy says, over there. And so I walk over to this guy, and I say, excuse me, I'm trying to buy this coat here, but uh, hey, it says 129 on it, but look at it. I mean, yeah, it was pretty beat up. You know, look at a button missing. <laughs> it was in the pocket, but it was missing. I would have had to sew it on. I said, look, it looks like it's been worn by somebody. I mean, it's kind of sad shape. I say, uh, what do you say, 99 bucks? What do you say, huh? He says, um, for you, Mr. Smalley. <laughs> I felt the box. He said, he said, uh, he said, we're watching your videos right now. Oh, man. I mean, I have never done that since. And, and, you know, just such a, such a humiliating experience. But anyway, that, that, see, the, that's the otter. Now, there are a lot of fun. Under pressure, we tend to attack. Uh, the thing that, that kind of relaxes us is to be able to talk more. <laughs> And to be with people. We like social time. Whereas is when I get to my wife's personality, she has the kind that likes to be alone and not talk to anyone. So that, that is a problem when you marry a person of the, of the opposite, uh, which 